No one's setting a standard that the Bible doesn't set. But I do think there is a biblical standard. Give us this day our daily bread. Man cannot live on bread alone, but every word that comes from the mouth of God. So there's this kind of picture with the manna that God gave to the children of Israel day by day that they need to get bread from heaven. They need to get the truth from him so that they can have their sustenance and then um, give that to others. I am yours, I am yours, I am yours, send me, Lord. I am yours, I am yours, I am yours. Welcome to the Gospel Center Pro Life Podcast, a podcast designed to equip, encourage, and challenge you in pro life ministry, and always with a focus on the gospel. Stay tuned. I felt your passion, touched your heart. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Gospel Centered Pro Life Podcast. I'm Vicki Kosiorg. I am the Charlotte area sidewalk. I don't know what I am here. I just work on the sidewalk. Yes. <laughs> but nationally, I am the sidewalk training director, and I'm here with Daniel Parks, who does know what he does. Yeah, mostly right, I do. Sometimes I struggle to figure yeah. out what I'm actually doing. But yes, I serve as right. the West Coast Regional <laughs> Shepherd for Love Life. I oversee all of our Love Life cities from the Rockies West. I'm blessed to be a part of what the Lord's doing on the West Coast. It's pretty amazing to be a part of that. And then I also oversee the sidewalk ministry nationally. So if teams are having struggles, whatever city they might be in, from the East Coast to the West Coast, on the sidewalks, that's one kind of branch of ministry for Love Life in a city. I'll speak into that stuff, offer some encouragement, some wisdom, some strategy. And so combined, Vicki and I have... Over 25 Over 30. Years? Well, I think 30 years now. Okay. Because you've been, yeah, 17, 18. I've been we'll almost We'll just round 11. up, so right? Very, we have, we have a lot of experience up. in doing things the wrong way. <laughs> and we've learned how to do things what we believe is the Lord's way. So we bring right. these episodes to you to just uh, help you guys to learn from what we've learned. And to be an encouragement to you guys, we do episodes that are practical, kind of Uh, more nitty gritty. Here's how you do this. And then we do some that are more philosophical. Here's why you do this. So we hope to uh, bring you guys this episode, I think maybe more in the practical vein and uh, offer some encouragement for you guys. We will give you guys our email addresses at the end of this episode. So you can reach out to us if you have some questions about this episode or others, or maybe suggestions for future episodes. We'd love to hear um, some suggestions from you guys. But let's jump into it. But before we do that, I need to mention the podcast website, gospelcenteredprolife.com. Because if you have questions about sidewalk ministry, my guess is we've already done an episode about it. So you can go on our podcast website, gospelcenteredprolife.com. You can search keywords for episodes. So take advantage of that. And also our training and equipping website, sidewalks4life.com. You can get a hold of the articles that are the framework for these episodes, as well as some other training and equipping stuff that's on that website. So check those things out. And now we can jump into the episode. Okay. So today's episode, I actually get asked about this quite a bit. What do you do? How how do you get ready? Because it's so it's such hard work and there's yeah. such enormous spiritual battle. Some people tell me they feel like throwing up the day of and or you know, yeah. we've all talked about all the spiritual warfare that often occurs the night before and the day of. And I find yeah, that so, one so of the in things, particular, just so we're clear, we're talking yeah. about How do you prepare before you're Mm -hmm. going out to the sidewalk? You're a volunteer or you're a leader in some capacity, and um, maybe you're out there once a week or maybe you're out there more than once a week. But like, what are some of the practical preparations that you can do to get your mind and your heart and even your body in line with the work that you're called to? Yeah. And we have touched on this, I know, on in many podcasts, but we've put this all together in, in one po- podcast. Um, it, it's kind of what I do, but I think, Daniel, you share a lot of um, a lot of this uh, yeah. with me. But um, the well, verse that I Let me share with I you guys before we was... get into this. This is Vicky's routine. Okay. Just so you guys know, you can see it on social media. So Vicky gets up at 430 in the morning. She has... <laughs> two hours in prayer and in Bible reading. She goes in kayaks for 37 miles. Then she rides her bike 
for 47 miles. She's already at that point led five people oh, to the Lord, um, talked to about <laughs> 10 ladies on the phone and, and helped them to choose life for their babies. On a bad day. On a bad day. <laughs> on a bad day. And then she shows up to the abortion clinic at nine o'clock. And she's, That's right. She's good to go. He's, he's, he has described it to a T. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it looks like. Um, it's like it's pretty oh, amazing. I love I love social media. <laughs> yeah, it makes it, it makes you look oh, like such a servant of the Lord, right? It, it does. Okay. Well, anyway, I I just lost my ear thing. I was laughing so hard. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Yeah, some funny. of that, I some of that was actually true, though. I do often get up at four thirty or five. Often, that is, it's just my body won't. Yeah, it won't so, do anything else. But <laughs> just to encourage you guys, you don't have to do all the things that Vicky does. You don't have to you get up not. at four thirty. <laughs> I do not get up at four thirty. That's an ungodly time to get up in the morning. <laughs> but um, uh, you know, yeah. it does help to get up early enough to do some of these things to get your focus. Get your mind right. It's 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 not a great idea to just roll out of bed, put your pants and a shirt on and go out to the sidewalk, right? There is some preparation. There's some routine that can help you to get your mind and your heart in line with what the Lord's called you to out there. I, I really think that is true, that uh, the more prepared you are spiritually and physically and materially, the things that you will need, uh, it just, it makes that morning calm and unrushed. Yeah. And uh, for me, uh, I think for all of us, what those women need to see is calm assurance yeah. and confidence. And I think if we are racing to get ready we're we're racing to get dressed tra- racing to read what we need to read about the weather or whatever uh racing in traffic that was unexpectedly heavy and we arrive in this state of frenzy we're no different than them and yeah. they have told us so many times you were something i was not and yeah. i wanted what you had yeah so this is how i as best as I can control, I can't control everything, none of us can, but I do try to control what I can control to be as ready um, in every area, spiritually, emotionally, physically, like I said, every area to serve the Lord with my focus on the Lord. It yeah. is very intentional. And I think maybe if there's a key word in there, it is be intentional right. in um, in your preparation. And when you wake up doesn't, you know, that that is definitely up to, to you all. Um, but if I don't get up early, I can't do all these things. And they are all important to me. So, yeah. um, so I do. So um, I, I think throughout this, let's keep in mind um, why we're doing what we're doing. And I love Psalm 5015. Call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you and you shall glorify me. Yeah. Our deliverance, the baby's deliverance is through the Lord. And the um the, do, the our desire as we serve is always to glorify God. Yeah. Absolutely. So whatever you do in your morning strategy, the the goal is to glorify God. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Amen. Yeah. So um the first thing I do. Um, a lot of what I do, I do, and I people that I talk with that are ready for the morning tend to what I call back chain. They know what time they need to be up to get all the things they need done. And so they back chain what has to happen the night before. And right. I think that is key. Yeah. Um, if the more you can get done the night before, that will help you the morning of, the less rushed and right. chaotic the the morning's going to be. Yeah, so I mean, the night- I mean, just practically speaking along those lines, which is kind of the first thing that you mentioned here in the article, the first yeah. subheading is preparing for the weather. I always yeah. check the weather the night before so that I know what yep. clothes and what shoes. And, you know, if I have, you know, if it's going to be raining, I know that I need to put on some, you know, some shoes that are waterproof or at least will help me navigate through that. I don't want to have shoes that are going to get soaking wet. And also want to make sure I've got my raincoat ready to go. So I don't run out of the house. Cause if if I do run out of the house, even if I do run out of the house in a little bit of a frenzy, I want to make sure I've got my raincoat in the car. So I'll go ahead and put that in the car, make sure I got an umbrella in in my car and I'll do that stuff the night before. Yeah. 
really good. And then that's what I do as well. And I prepare for the worst case scenario. Yeah. Um, and I do check the weather again in the morning because the weather does change. Um, but I do try to always be prepared for what what's the worst that they're kind of predicting. Yeah. Because in, it, oftentimes that's what we get in, in front of yeah. the abortion sure. center. So um, in, in our ministry here, we have a team calendar. I do recommend every team have a team calendar where, where you see who is going to be out there. And, and we really encourage people to be faithful to that calendar so we know what we're facing. Yeah. helps a lot in your mental preparation to know, I'm. do I have a really small team? Do I have a larger team? Right. Um, and who are my teammates? I, so I always check the calendar. Again, I, I check it the night before, but also um, that, that morning. Yeah. And part of the reason is strategy does change depending on who's there and how many people are there. Sure. And, yeah. um, and so I want to be thinking through that, like what, where will be the best placement? Who do we have? What will be their roles? All that kind of stuff. Right. Just kind of already preparing for, for what's going to happen out there and checking the calendar, really important for that. Um, this one, Daniel, I know I, you always, always uh, preface really everything that we talk about with with this this next point. Sure. About yeah. spending time in the word. Yeah, yeah. I mean, one of the things that we say often is you can't give what you don't have. Right? Yeah. And we believe the word, the word of God, as it says in Hebrews chapter four, the word of God is alive and active and sharper than any two edged sword. It's able to pierce the divide between soul and spirit and bone and marrow. It's the discerner of the thoughts and intentions of the heart. So what helps us cut through some of the lies that these women are facing is the word of God. But we need to have the lies that are told to us by the devil and by our flesh and our lives cut through. And we do that by being in the word. So we need to read the word and we need to let the word read us, right? So that we keep our hearts uh, tender before the Lord. We keep our focus on the Lord. So spending time in the Word, again, you can't give what you don't have. We want to make sure we have the Word in us so that when we're speaking to these moms, the foundation is a sure foundation, the Word of God. And then, of course, again, just, you know, that's part of cultivating your relationship with Jesus. Can't give what you don't have. Again, part of cultivating a relationship with someone is communication, right? You've got to have communication. Prayer is your communication to the Lord. Reading the Word is His communication to you. And then, of course, so that's part of knowing him, right? But if you don't know the Lord yourself intimately, and these women that we encounter, these men that we encounter, they need to know the Lord. If you don't know him, if you're not walking close with him, how in the world are you going to get those women and men to walk close with the Lord? And so, you know, being in the word and being disciplined in the word and not just, I mean, I know there's times, listen, there's grace, right? There's times where you are running a little late. And maybe you put on your Bible app and you listen to the scripture that morning on your way. But I do think that should be the exception rather than the rule, right? I think some intentional time with you and the Lord you know, on your couch with a cup of coffee or, you know, in your prayer closet is really important. So that, again, you're not pulling from an empty well, right? You're pulling water from a well that's a living well that's constantly you're being poured into. And so you're pouring out. It's important. Yeah, totally agree. And because I have to eat breakfast or I, I will not have the energy um, to minister well, I, I open up, I make my breakfast and sit down in my little corner um, all alone in the dark with my breakfast and my Bible. And, um, and I, I read and, and eat breakfast, and uh, it's a really precious time, and yeah. it's a very uh, peaceful. No one else is awake, and, um, you know, the, even, you know, you don't hear cars or anything outside. It's just so, the early morning time is such a great time, which Jesus did. He would go away to yeah. a lonely place in the um, where there wasn't any distractions and, and spend, spend time with his father, spend time in the Word. And um, I love that time. It is so important to me. And I'm praying during that time as I'm reading um, and really trying to find what God is specifically kind of the marching orders for the day. Yeah. Um, because they're there. They're always there. 
um, not only for me, but I also, I've said this many times, I put out a Bible verse um, for the um, the women who have chosen life. It's a, on a group email. And as I'm reading, I'm always thinking, um, what will minister to these uh, these women? What what verse would God have me send them? So it is, yeah. of all of this um, list of things, I think it is the absolute most important. If I had yeah. to eliminate everything else, don't eliminate spending time, even if it you have little time and therefore it's just reading a few verses, but don't eliminate it. In my yeah. opinion, this is the absolute most important thing. Yeah, and you'd be surprised you how often the Lord, through your Bible reading, gives you something specifically mm-hmm. that's either for you to encourage you mm-hmm. in this ministry or to encourage your team mm-hmm. or to encourage the moms and the dads that you reach like a Bible verse you read that morning and some application that the Lord connected the dots for you for can actually help you connect yeah. the dots for other people. So it's important. Yeah. Um, and yeah. I would encourage just practically speaking um, rather than let me open the Bible wherever it falls, let me read. I think it's good to have a Bible reading plan. The Bible reading plan that I use is a two chapter a day. I'm a real slow reader, not that I can't read well, which I actually can't read that well. But um, (laughs) aside from that, I'm a slow reader because I read for depth. I don't read for length. I'm not trying to get through a whole book of the Bible in a day or whatever. I really want to meditate on um, the scripture. And so I read a chapter from the Old Testament and a chapter from the New Testament. I use this app called Seeing Jesus Together. It used to be called uh, CBR Community Bible Reading. They changed it to Seeing Jesus Together. And it just gives you um, a chapter from the Old Testament, a chapter from the New. So right now I'm reading First Chronicles in the Old Testament. I'm reading Ephesians in the New. Um, so that's something you guys can take advantage of. I think, Vicki, you have like a read the Bible in a year kind of plan. You're a lot faster reader than I am, but. Well, it's it's actually not a whole lot more than that. It's usually a chapter from the Old Testament, a chapter from the New Testament, maybe a psalm and, or a proverb thrown in. Yeah, yeah. Um, but and, yeah. you know, personally, I might doable. spend about thirty minutes, maybe less than thirty minutes, in reading. Probably, probably mm-hmm. less than that, and then another, I don't know, fifteen or twenty minutes in prayer. I, mm-hmm. I kind of walk around the house and pray rather than kneeling and praying in, in, a, in a prayer closet or whatever, I kind of, I like to walk and pray. And my prayers yeah. mostly are around just gratitude to the Lord. And of course, if I'm ready for to do sidewalk ministry, I'm asking the Lord, Lord, equip me, help me to do this by the power of your spirit. So, you know, some prayers of surrender and things like that. Um, but again, it can look different for different people. No one's setting a standard that the Bible doesn't set. But I do think there is a biblical standard. Give us this day our daily bread. Man cannot live on bread alone, but every word that comes from the mouth of God. So there's this kind of picture with the manna that God gave to the children of Israel day by day that they need to get bread from heaven. They need to get the truth from him so that they can have their sustenance and then um, give that to others. Yeah, amen. And and um, prayer is is very, very critical. And there's, there's two aspects to prayer that, that I approach myself in the morning. And one of them is while I'm doing my Bible study in the morning and meditating on what God is trying to tell me, um, I'm thinking of the fact that our teams need prayer support. So not only do yeah. I need to pray, but I want to elicit prayer support for our, for me and for our teams, because we're fighting a very dangerous battle, honestly, and with a very powerful enemy. So, but the way that I elicit prayer support is um, every morning as I'm doing my Bible study, I'll see a verse that really strikes me as what God is saying I need to um, express. I use social media. I post that verse with a picture from the day before and maybe a recap of what happened on the sidewalk the day before before and 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 ask specifically for my Facebook yeah. friends, um, please be praying for us. Um, and then, you know, and the reasons why. Yeah. And I do that every single morning. Every single morning I'm I'm eliciting prayer support in that way. The way you many people are prayer partners and I know people go about that in a different way. This is the method by which I elicit prayer support, but I do think 
all of us should be asking others to be praying for us specifically when we're out there um, yeah. on the sidewalk. Um, and then what you touched upon, personal prayer, again, critical in, in the morning. I do, at putting on the full arm of God, I pray for that, and I pray it in a very similar way because I learned it from you, Daniel. Um, putting on each piece of armor as described in Ephesians 6. Is it 6? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I, my own personal um, prayer life is most effective when I'm moving. <laughs> yeah, me I too. It's not effective for me to get on my knees. My mind goes to what to make for dinner. But when I'm on my bike or a kayak or a long walk, especially in the dark, um, not the kayak or bike, but a long walk in the dark, um, where I'm – and in nature, um, I just – prayer pours out of me. Yeah. Um, I'm just so in, in touch with God's creation, and that helps to open my prayer life. Yeah. Um, that may not be true of everyone, but so I reserve um, a good hour um, every morning – that I'm going to do one of those things, walk. And right now it's biking because of this life ride event that we've talked about. Um, but I'm in prayer during, during that time. Yeah. And whatever works for you all, you know, my, my way is not the highway. There's lots of ways. To, everybody kind of has a different maybe way of approaching God yeah. in, in prayer, but huge priority for me. It, yeah. I've, yeah, absolutely. I've, it it helps us to focus and yeah. um, get our yeah, hearts and it, in it, it, it goes back to that whole dynamic: you can't give what you don't have, right? Cultivating intimacy with the Lord is important, and reading the Word and prayer um, is important. I know you have in the article being specific about um, petitioning the Lord. So, yeah. you know, I think specifically praying for the moms that mm -hmm. are coming to the abortion center, being specific about that, lifting those prayers up to the Lord, the moms, the dads. Uh, specifically, I would say, and this kind of goes back to what you're talking about, checking the calendar, checking who's going to be there, praying for your team members yeah. for that day, just praying specifically over them, you know, help so-and-so to keep focused, help me to be an encouragement to them. I pray you just encourage them as they're getting ready to go out to the sidewalk. And so um, being specific in those petitions are, is, is really important as you're praying that morning. And then... Yeah, and the, the beauty of specific prayer is that if it's answered, um, and I know prayer is always answered. It may not be the way we expect or want, but um, God is always hearing our prayers. Yeah. Um, but if you're specific in prayer and then you see it happen, <laughs> yeah, it's just such an incredible boost. Yeah, of yeah, specific prayers get specific answers. So, yeah, yeah. that's a good point. I. Yeah, I pray every morning pretty pretty much uh, specifically, God, please bring me the women with conflicted hearts, even now as they're getting dressed, looking at themselves in the mirror. Let them see you and, and let them hear your voice. And please give me the opportunity to share the gospel. I pray, yeah. that, pray that every morning because those are what I feel are my two main roles out there. Um, is speaking to the conflicted women and sharing the gospel. And so I'm very specific. Lord, right. please bring me those opportunities and give me the courage to um, to embrace them yeah. when yeah, when they happen. Good. Because we, I think we all can shrink back from those opportunities. Maybe we know, oh, God just gave me a divine appointment. But man, I don't feel like getting into it right now. Right. And um, I, I feel that way. I I felt that way yesterday. Was it yesterday? It was. It seems like a, 10 years ago, there was a young man who was vile, angry, um, pants falling down <laughs> and, uh, his girlfriend was in the abortion center and he was screaming at our teammate. Um, and then he walked over to his car, which was along a fence with a public, um, parking lot behind it. And so I couldn't, you know, go through the fence, but I could get right up to him if I wanted. I just had to walk yeah. around the corner. The pro abortion crowd had no idea what I was doing. They weren't watching me. And I will tell you, my flesh fought that. I'm yeah. like, I don't want to talk to him. First of all, he was so mad at, at our other teammate and, um, and vile and, and so seemingly unreachable. And I did not want to do it, but I had prayed as I do always, Lord, Give me the courage to witness to, to 
someone who needs it. And this yeah. man obviously really needed it. So I, I went and I, um, there is a tarp over the top half. I had to sit down on the parking lot and I could like lean down and see him. And, um, and I, I said, sir, I, I just want to talk with you. You, it seems like you're really bitter and angry with God. And it seems like you've had a really rough go of it. And I, I just want to, um, ask you what's going on. And he softened. It was just, it was an amazing discussion. He ended up taking the literature. He went in to try and get her out. And then his whole attitude changed. By the time he came back out and she came out, he, he ignored us again and his heart was very hard. But while I was speaking to him, um, I could see his countenance change and, and I felt like the Holy Spirit was speaking to him and convicting him. Um, I don't know. I don't know what will happen in the end with that. Uh, the mom did get the abortion. He hugged her when she came out. But, um, but I know that there were some things I said that, um, that touched him. And, um, and I was really glad in retrospect that I had done that. Yeah. Um, Yeah. And that's the answer to the prayer for boldness that you specifically lifted up to the Lord. Yeah, and I also just also really want to emphasize the point, I didn't want to do it. It's right. not like after 11 years, suddenly it's easy. It's not. It's never easy. That that first step to walk over is there is always that check like, oh, I, I can't do this. I don't want to do this. Yeah. But so if it happens to me after 11 years out there. I imagine it happens to a lot of us. And I would just yeah. urge us to overcome it, you know, do, um, on the drive to the clinic, Daniel, I think it was you that, um, talked about, you know, you don't turn on the news or or anything. You're very specific about what you're listening to and focusing on as you're driving over. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And that's actually when I pray most of the time, putting on the armor of God is when I'm driving down the road to the clinic. And, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm intentional. Sometimes I put on praise music. Sometimes I just want to hear from the Lord, like what you have in the article. I think you do something similar sometimes, uh, actually oftentimes I'll do kind of a combination of both, right? I won't have praise music, but I'll have, um, William Augusto. He's kind of like my favorite instrumental music guy. Mm. So he plays like instrumental worship. It's really just, I don't know. It's calming, soothing music. But it's unto the Lord. And so I put that on on YouTube and, you know, I had some time to pray and hear from the Lord and put on the armor of God. And so I I think just the point is keeping our focus. It's easy, especially when you're driving in traffic, to get in the flesh, right? You've had maybe this awesome time in the Word, this awesome time in prayer at your house. You get in the car and then from your house to the abortion center, you're frazzled and you're angry because somebody cut you off in traffic and because of this and that and this and the other thing. And so it helps us to keep focus. And of course, you know, if you're listening to the news, it's all bad news. Right. And so um, that can really get you perturbed (laughs) and you don't want to be in an attitude of just being angry and, and uh, distracted by the news of the world and by the events of the world and by the traffic from your house to the abortion center. So I think putting on some kind of worship music, putting on some kind of instrumental music or something, but intentionally focusing on the Lord on that time is really important. Yeah. And then, then you know, practically speaking, as we uh, wrap up this episode, um, just talking about arriving early. So again, you don't want to, you don't want to rise, arrive to the clinic frazzled. And to me, I hate being late for stuff. And so if Mm -hmm. I, if I, so, so in order for me to arrive early, I have to leave earlier, right? And so it's good for you to check the traffic and figure out maybe the best route and that sort of thing so that you can get there five minutes earlier than you're supposed to be. Let's say you're supposed to be volunteering at nine o'clock. It's better for you to rise, arrive at 8.55 so that you're not frazzled again and you have some time to sort of transition your mind from the drive there to actually being effective on the sidewalk. Yeah. So these are just some tips, like we said, they're not rules and everybody is different, but they, this is, uh, be intentional and, yeah. and, and being prepared for, for that morning with, um, 
it, with the ministry. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Well, we hope that this was an encouragement to you guys. We hope that this article will be a blessing to you. Check it out. Sidewalks at number four, life.com. Check out all of our podcast episodes on gospelcenteredprolife.com. Reach out to us. You can reach me, Daniel, at lovelife.org. You can reach her, Vicky, with a Y, at lovelife.org. We'd love to hear uh, maybe some feedback on these episodes. Also, leave us a review on whatever podcast service that you use. We'd love to see some five-star reviews from you guys if you're blessed by these podcast episodes. But until next time, God bless. God bless you all. Give me an outlet for gratitude I know it will cost me my life Nothing's too precious since I met you